If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to have you back again. We're going to continue our series about taking a multifamily deal full cycle and what that looks like. Today, we're going to cover a lot of ground on an underwrite and it's very complicated, but to simplify the process, if you would like to get a copy of the very simple underwrite that we use just to analyze a deal quickly to understand what it is, stay to the end of the show and I'm going to give you a link that you can go to and download the underwrite for free. Um, so I'm glad you're here today. It is going to be a fun episode about underwriting deals. <laughs> and so um, if you get jazzed up about looking at spreadsheets, this is definitely for you. Um, if you don't, I'm going to make it pretty simple and straightforward so that uh, you can look at deals and understand them at least at a cursory level so that you can say yes, no, and move on to the next or pursue it further. So there are definitely more in-depth episodes on underwriting. And there are definitely more in-depth people who cover underwriting. So uh, take this as, again, a very cursory level so that you get the basic idea and, and you know how to go out and look at some on your own and quickly assess them. So before we jump in, I just want to say, again, if you are interested in seeing some of these episodes on YouTube, we have our YouTube is up and running. It's at Agents Building Cashflow when you're on there. Also, we're on Instagram quite a bit now. We are putting out short, quick content uh, so we hope you're getting some value out of that as well. Uh, please jump on, subscribe, rate and review. We'd love to see you on all the social platforms. If you have comments on any of these uh, videos that we're putting out, or if you disagree with anything, by all means, shoot out uh, an email to us, podcast at hsbuildingcashflow.com, and we will get to your comments, obviously. All right, here we go. Let's jump in. Okay, so for... If you are unaware of what underwriting is, um, don't worry. Underwriting is simply uh, putting the financials together and analyzing a deal. That's all it is. So if you're familiar with single family investing and you look at the purchase price, the ARV, the potential rents, it's very similar to that. Just gets a little bit more involved when you start looking at pro formas. But at a very high level, when you are looking at uh, these multifamily or commercial properties, then there's, there's pretty much a, a simple formula. And that's what we're going to cover today. Let's go. Okay. So one of the main things you're going to get, let's assume that you're buying a deal that has a broker involved. They have an uh, an offering memorandum that is just a document that shows the property, the address, uh, who is listing it, uh, some facts about the town, some things that are going on, why it's a good deal. And then they talk about the financials, the rent comps, and a number of other things that are put in there. A lot of uh, fluff and things that that are in there. The OM is going to have the financials or at least the broker's uh, condensed or modified version of the financials. You always want to get the actual financials yourself so that you can review them and make sure that everything is included on the broker's financials because a lot of times it's not. So the things that you need to keep in mind that you're looking for, you're looking for the net operating income. A very simplistic way to look at returns is a cash on cash return for the investment. And you can look at the, the cap rate. As I discussed last week, the cap rate isn't always the best indicator of uh, what the property is worth, but it just it's a comparison uh, for properties in a similar area. You can just look at the cap rates. And then you also need to look at the debt service coverage ratio. So let's dive in and talk about each one of those things and how you get to them. Okay, so first let's talk about the net operating income. And that is when you take the top line revenue, what the property can make and produce, and then you subtract out all the expenses, the vacancy, the uh, bad debt, uh, the maintenance, management, all the things that go into it, you get down to the net operating income. So it's profits minus expenses, net operating income. It doesn't take into account debt service or anything like that. It is simply a number that tells you how much, if you own that property free and clear, how much cash that thing would produce. That's the net operating income. Once you have the net operating income, you can find out what the cap rate is or the capitalization rate. Uh, and and the, the way you do the calculations, you take the NOI and you divide it by the, the purchase price. And that gives you the cap rate. Just as an example, in San Antonio, class B multifamily had been trading, you know, around the five, five, two, five rate for a while. That's ticked up a bit because interest rates have gone up. 
And the like class C, it depends on again, where it is, how good of a class C is it a class C and a class B neighborhood. Um, those things were trading around six and a half. I'm, I'm underwriting to about a seven. Um, and I'm very conservative, right? So it just depends. You can also look at it and then throw a number on it, but the way, the reason the cap rate is, is uh, important in this discussion is because it's a very quick way to know the value that you should be paying for that property. If the, the property is, they're asking $5 million for it. And yet the NOI is only $50,000 uh, a year. That is the, the cap rate. If you do the math on it is pretty terrible. Just for all the like quick math whizzes out there, that's a 1% cap rate. Meaning if you own that free and clear, you'd be getting 1% on your money. That is not a deal that you should be doing. The next item that you can look at, again, to give you a quick idea is the cash on cash return or the annual cash on cash return. Uh, typically when you're buying a multifamily deal, depending on how you structure the finance and if you have equity partners on the deal, the cash flow in year one is is lower than it, it is as you do a value add to the deal. That's not always the case. If you're buying a class A that's fully stabilized in perfect condition, doesn't need any CapEx uh, uh, done to it, then you you may just be buying basically the rate. It's if you're getting, you know, a 5% return, that's the cash on cash that's going to show. You may be able to increase rents, this and that. I don't want to get in the weeds, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that there. All right. So the next item is the DSCR, the debt service coverage ratio. Um, if I were having to explain this to my son, my six-year-old, um, this is pretty much how I would explain it to him. The DSCR is like a test to see if you have enough money in your bank, in your piggy bank, to pay off the debts that you have from maybe a friend and still have some money left over to go buy some toys or do some things that are fun, right? It's really just a financial test to make sure that the property is healthy with the debt that it has on it. And if it's not, then you may not be able to afford paying back your friend and you can't buy any toys. Okay, now that we know some of the terms, let's jump into talking about the expenses. Uh, we'll talk about the income next. So on the expenses side, some of the things that you are looking for when you're underwriting a deal, it's going to be uh, the operating expenses and CapEx expenses and the vacancy rate. So typically, again, you'll have the gross revenue, you'll take out uh, vacancy and bad debt, meaning people aren't paying, um, or lost to lease even. That's another thing in there. Um, and we can dive into those things, but those are things you have to account for. It's same with the a smaller property. Um, uh, if you're not accounting for some sort of vacancy or unit terms or anything like that, then you're really not doing yourself justice. You're not analyzing that deal properly. So on the expenses side, again, you have those, the, those items that are taking away from the, the revenue, which is the vacancy, the, bad debt and the loss to lease. And, and that'll give you like your net gross revenue after some of these, these items, then you get into the expenses. So the expenses you're looking for repairs and maintenance, you're looking for items like taxes, insurance, uh, property management fees, all of those things are above the line. So they should be on a profit and loss statement that you can look at quickly and uh, utilities and that sort of stuff and, and see all the total expenses add up. A, a quick rule of thumb, if you are looking at deals, you can do uh, 50 to 55% of the like revenue that's coming in, you can take off as expenses. Again, very general rule, depends on the property. But when you're quickly looking at a deal, that's a, that's a very quick and easy way to see what the net operating income should be based on having 55%. If you're buying a 100 unit deal, and they only have a 20% expense ratio, then they're not calculating some of their expenses somewhere in there. And you, if you bought it based on those numbers, you'd be overpaying for the property. All right. Happy to dive into that. Happy to explain that a little bit more. Um, if you're underwriting a deal, just reach out to me. Okay. So let's see. So you got the OPEX and you have CAPEX as well. So you, you want to know when you're looking at a deal, does it need a new roof? How old was it? And, and a lot of times on an OM, you're going to see um, you know, new roofs in 2019 or needs new roofs or something. So you need to put that into your budget because that's money you're going to have to spend when you buy it. It's either deferred maintenance or CapEx items that need to be, need to be, uh, capital improvements, like could be unit upgrades. If you are projecting, or you think because this property was built in 1980, none of the units were ever upgraded that you're going to have to go in and spend five to $10,000 on a, a unit in order to get the, the highest market rents that you can, you need to do that quick calculation and figure out, does that make sense? And one easy way to do that is just like a uh, single family, just like any other property, 
So again, on, on CapEx, if you are going to spend, say, $10,000 per unit, and that gets you extra $200 per month for that unit, that's $2,400 per year on a $10,000 spend. And so if you look at that return just on a cash on cash return for that investment, it's a 24% return on the $10,000 in year one. So that's well worth doing if you're able to get those rents. The reason I'm bringing it up right now is because that's an item that you need to look at when you're doing a quick underwrite on these deals. Is it going to be 10,000? Is it 5,000? Or are the units perfect and you don't have to spend any of that um, on expenses? All right. One of the other things to look at and to note are the vacancy rates. Um, so if there's 0% vacancy currently at the property, that's all well and good. One thing to just be cognizant of is the fact that when people are going to sell their properties, the, some of them will just start putting in warm bodies so that they have 100% occupancy and they're getting some uh, some rental income so that their books look like they're padded. So just watch out for that and understand that because you may be walking into something. Read the rent rolls and understand when those leases were signed. If they were if they're like 50% of the property was leased in the last month, red flag, right? Um, so just pay attention to stuff like that. Okay, so that's a high level again on the expenses kind of a 55% uh, expense ratio is something that you could use as a quick and dirty way to, to to get to a number. Now let's talk about the income side. Obviously on the income side, you have the gross potential rent, the GPR. And that's if the property is hitting its full market rates, like this property is a thousand square feet or the, the, the unit is a thousand square feet and it should be getting a dollar a foot. So you're getting a thousand dollars a month for that unit in perfect conditions. But let's say that it's only renting for $900, right? Um, that doesn't matter in the GPR equation, right? When you're trying to figure out the the total that it can earn, you just take the $1,000. Um, it's 100 units, $1,000 per unit. Boom. That's your number for your gross potential rent. Then you take into account the fact that it's not earning the full potential. So you can look at the rent roll. You can figure out quickly what the actual leases are. And so instead of it earning 1000 maybe it's the 900 um, that will give you what your loss to lease is. I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but it's typically on the on the financials and you can take a look at it. Just make sure that the financials match the rent rolls in order to underwrite the proper way. All right. So let's wrap this up and talk briefly about a performa and what the performa does. Essentially the 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 year one, once you once you uh, get the financials from the property. You know the trailing 12 months of finances, what the property operated 12 months up to today. And and then you need to project what you think it's going to make over the next five years. Um, and so typically you are throwing in some kind of annual rent increase of three to 5%. And the last couple of years, people were estimating 20% rent growth. It's been crazy. So now you got to bring that down and more in line. But the whole idea of the performa is that you take the numbers that you have and then you project it out over the next five years so that you, when you sell the property, you know what your net operating income is at that time. Now, you're not going to know 100%, but you have a good idea. It's your best guess as to how you're going to operate the property, um, the expenses you're going to reduce, the income you're going to increase, da, 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 gets you your new NOI, which gets you your sale price when you go to sell it in year five. And then you can work out your returns based on your IRRs, your equity multiples, all those things come into play um, just from this underwrite, right? And your projections going forward. So uh, a lot to go into an underwrite. It is an art and there are experts who do it all the time. If you build a team out, it is certainly somebody you want on your team. Uh, and if you're just starting out, it's something, it's a skill that you need to learn and understand. Um, so we could dive into this. This could be a full episode with a training webinar and all kinds of stuff that go into this just because um, there's there's a lot to it. And this is a crux of underwriting or finding a deal and making it make sense. At a high level, as long as you understand the basics and you can look at a property and quickly determine yes or no, that'll get you to the next step where you can then figure out if you want to pursue it further and build out a full uh, performa. All right. So that concludes the underwriting portion. Obviously, there's a ton there. Again, keep doing the reps, keep getting into it and um, walk a ton of properties, understand, uh, you start to learn the process, right? Um, next week, we're going to cover the actual acquisition, making an offer, submitting an LOI, what that looks like, some of the things that you should have in that uh, document. And, um, and then we'll go from there. 
All right. Awesome. You made it to the end of the episode. And as promised, I wanted to give you a link to get your very own performance so that you can go and look at some of these deals. It's very simple, very easy. It's free. Um, go to www.commission2, the number two, cashflow.com forward slash pro forma. All right. See you on the next episode. Did you know that 80% of the agents we speak with got into real estate in order to gain passive income so they could obtain financial freedom and become work optional? If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. We'll catch you on the next episode.